Hi, my name is Angèle, and I would like to continue from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. We are now at Article 5. The title is, From the Profession of Faith, He Descended into Hell, On the Third Day He Rose Again. Um, number 631, Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is he who also ascended far above all the heavens. The Apostles' Creed confesses in the same article, Christ's descent into hell and his resurrection from the dead on the third day, because in his Passover it was precisely out of the depths of death that he made life spring forth. The title is Christ Descended into Hell. Number 632. The frequent New Testament affirmations that Jesus was raised from the dead presuppose that the crucified one sojourned in the realm of the dead prior to his resurrection. This was the first meaning given in the apostolic preaching to Christ's descent into hell, that Jesus, like all men, experienced death and in his soul joined the others in the realm of the dead. But he descended there as Savior, proclaiming the good news to the spirits imprisoned there. So all the, the, um, the just who had passed away and were waiting for the Redeemer to open um, the gates of eternal life, uh, we're waiting in the realms of the dead for Jesus. Number 633. Scripture calls the abode of the dead to which the dead Christ went down, hell. In other words, Sheol in Hebrew or Hades in Greek. Because those who are there are deprived of the vision of God. Such is the case for all the dead whether evil or righteous, while they await the Redeemer, which does not mean that their lot is identical, as Jesus shows through the parable of the poor man Lazarus, who was received into Abraham's bosom. It is precisely these holy souls who awaited their Savior in Abraham's bosom, whom Christ the Lord delivered when he descended into hell. Jesus did not descend into hell to deliver the damned, nor to destroy the hell of damnation, but to free the just who had gone before him. In this realm of the dead, there are different areas, um, and there's the area where those who lived a life of mortal sin and were not just those who were evil and loved evil uh, are destined for eternal separation from God and there is no redemption for these souls um, they will ha they have eternal separation from God even after the resurrection of the dead at the end of time uh, which is something I didn't realize until not too long ago. Um, it didn't dawn on me that um, it's not only the righteous that will rise from the dead, but also the damned are going to experience the resurrection. They will have to live an eternal hell and suffering, separated from God in a f in a, in, with their f bodies, with their resurrected bodies. So that is um, so sad. But uh, here Jesus went down to the holy souls in the realms of Sheol. And, and this is what it means when we say uh, that Christ descended into hell. He went into the realms where there were holy souls waiting in, in the realms for those who are deprived of the vision of God. Number 634, the gospel was preached even to the dead. The descent into hell brings the gospel message of salvation to complete fulfillment. This is the last phase of Jesus' messianic mission, a phase 
which is condensed in time but vast in its real significance. The spread of Christ's redemptive work to all men of all times and all places. For all who are saved have been made sharers in the redemption. Number 635. Christ went down into the depths of death so that the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Jesus, the author of life, by dying, destroyed him who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and delivered all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong bondage. Henceforth, the risen Christ holds the keys of death and Hades, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And now there's an ancient homily for Holy Saturday. Today, a great silence reigns on earth, a great silence and a great stillness, a great silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh and he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. He has gone to search for Adam, our first father, as for a lost sheep, greatly desiring to visit those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. He has gone to free from sorrow Adam in his bonds and Eve captive with him. He who is both their God and the son of Eve. I am your God, who for your sake have become your son. I order you, O sleeper, to awake. I did not create you to be a prisoner in hell. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. It's a beautiful homily. So there's a few paragraphs here in brief. Number 636. By the expression, he descended into hell. The Apostles' Creed confesses that Jesus did really die and through his death for us conquered death and the devil who has the power of death. Number 637. In his human soul, united to his divine person, the dead Christ went down to the realm of the dead. He opened heaven's gate for the just who had gone before him. All those who are just. Um, we are all connected. And there's the triumphant church. Those are the, the souls of our brothers and sisters who have made it to heaven, who uh, enjoy the beatific vision they have uh, this full union with God. They've been purified. Their souls are, are pure and they are in heaven. And they pray for us. They don't have to pray for themselves. Uh, nobody has to pray for them anymore because they found the fullness of salvation and union, union with God in heaven. But they do um, powerfully intercede for us. These are the saints and then there's the suffering church, and that is purgatory. Those are the souls of those who have died, who still need to be purified, who still haven't reached perfect love of God. And so in the, in the realm of, of purgatory, they are going through a time of purification. And they cannot pray for themselves and depend on our prayers. Um, we are the militant church, the ones who are here in this valley of tears <laughs> here on earth. We can help the souls in purgatory with our prayers, with our sacrifices, with our, um, when we live holy lives, when we strive to avoid sin, um, we can help them by offering our prayers. We're the militant church. That means we're in battle through prayer and through vigilance, avoiding what is evil, of avoiding occasions of sin. And 
especially in this month of November, it is the month for the souls uh, of the dead, the souls in purgatory. And I'm just starting to discover uh, the beauty of indulgences. And in this month, especially, we can offer um, indulgence, and plenary indulgence for the souls in purgatory, which allows a soul in purgatory to um, enter heaven when you can offer a plenary indulgence. Um, I'm thinking of doing a video about this that is going to be more uh, detailed and, and um, where I'm able to take more time to explain a little bit more what a plenary indulgence is, what indulgences are. Um, so, yes, I hope that I can, by the grace of God, <laughs> um, try to cover that and explain this for all of you to understand and to see how beautiful it is to help the souls in purgatory uh, to come closer to God, to be alleviated of their um, of their sufferings, and to enter into the realms of heaven as soon as possible. Uh, this this is a great act of mercy when we can help our brothers and sisters in purgatory to to enter union with God, and we can be sure that when we help a soul in purgatory to more quickly and with less suffering to get through uh, purgatory and enter heaven more quickly uh, that the, the gratitude must be just enormous right I, I know that I would be so grateful and um, that we have then these friends in heaven that surely are praying for us helping us to persevere in the battle that we are in, to stay faithful to Jesus in this life here on earth. So, I hope that that was helpful. And uh, it was not as long today. It's a little bit of a shorter paragraph. But also important to understand that Jesus did not go into the realms of the damned when we say hell, but in the realms of, of, of uh, the dead where souls were just but not able to enter heaven without, uh, without Jesus and the power of his redemption. So let us continue to keep our eyes on Jesus, putting all of our trust in him, letting him take care of everything through Mother Mary, with Joseph. May God bless you and protect you always.